good? And all the time, as you can see, the vision and everything that we do, everything that we do in, in our church, it, it, it comes, it all encircles around Holy Spirit. It all everything that we do every prayer that we uh, prayers that we pray the vision home groups witnessing everything uh, everything has to do everything comes back to one person it's the person of the Holy Spirit um, you can open to Luke chapter 4 and just just keep it there and um, I'll actually let's let's just read it and we'll just kick off our message Luke chapter 4 verse 1. Then Jesus full of the Holy Spirit returned from the Jordan, of, uh, Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. Okay so I want you to notice Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. You can underline full of the Holy Spirit and then led by the Spirit. And let's jump to verse 14. Then it says, then Jesus returned to Galilee filled with the Holy Spirit's power or with the power of the Holy Spirit, depending on translations you're reading. You can underline filled with power. And so the life of Jesus, it was all around Holy Spirit. And as Pastor Vlad already mentioned and, and kind of kicked off this message right from the beginning, with the prayer that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Jesus partnered up, he lived, he walked with the Holy Spirit. Jesus ministered in the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus offered himself up through the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus was leaving this earth, he said, I will always be with you. I will not leave you. He will be with us through the Holy Spirit everything about Jesus was about the Holy Spirit first sermon Jesus preached he said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me first message Jesus preached first thing that he did he spoke about the Holy Spirit and his anointing and the very last words he said when he left was I will be with you meaning we know that Jesus was taken off he was going but he said that I'm gonna send someone that just is like me like and so we see in the life of Jesus that the Holy Spirit was the center of all things. Holy, uh, Jesus went and he spent nights in prayer and we heard Lilia talk about prayer. He spent mornings in prayer fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, partnering up with him and then when he would come down from the mountain he would minister, he would preach the gospel, cast out demons, heal the sick and bring blessing to people. So as Christians our life we cannot afford to live our life without fellowship of the Holy Spirit. We cannot live our life, we cannot afford to live a Christian life and not knowing the person of the Holy Spirit. Jesus desired us to know Him. He said, I'm going to go and plead the Father so you will have Him. Because Jesus knew that without the Holy Spirit, we will not be able to make it without the Holy Spirit we will not be able to accomplish the task at hand without the Holy Spirit we can do nothing in John chapter 15 Jesus said and Pastor Vlad read that uh, uh, passage yesterday that abide in me and I will abide in you and you will bear much fruit that's pretty much the theme of that chapter but Jesus was leaving the earth what Jesus was saying as he was speaking about himself in abiding in Jesus he was speaking of the Holy Spirit as well because Holy Spirit is Holy Spirit replace physical Jesus in our lives we need Holy Spirit in our lives because we live in a world where there is opposite spirit, evil spirit. You have to understand that as a Christian the reason why we need the Holy Spirit 
is because there is another spirit there is evil spirit bible says that he walks around like a roaring lion seeking who to destroy to devour to kill steal and destroy you have to understand that if you take the holy spirit from this earth if you take the holy spirit from the church devil will demolish us Holy Spirit is a person and He is a person that gives us power to overcome. See with, a, with our own flesh and blood we are no match to evil spirit, to Satan and to his agents. There's nothing we can do to come against or to break or to destroy or even survive without, without the Holy Spirit. The other, yesterday, yesterday when we were uh, praying for some people, some people, some people were receiving deliverance yesterday, some people received deliverance yesterday and, and the evil spirits were speaking out to say, I am here to destroy this person. I was sent to kill and I will accomplish my task and I will not leave her him until I accomplish my task and honestly we've been we've been doing deliverances for some time and this is nothing new Jesus said about it he said he comes to kill steal and destroy and I came to give life and life with more abundance and so as we were praying yesterday and other times we rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to cast out the demon and without him we will not be able to do that without him the thing that that demon was speaking out saying I will kill her I will kill him I will destroy him I make sure that nobody likes them I make sure that they will always suffer I make sure they're always in sickness without the Holy Spirit they freely roam and accomplish their task that's why as a church we cannot afford not to have relationship with the Holy Spirit as a church we have nothing to offer to this world without the relationship of, with the Holy Spirit. In our church, as Pastor Lot mentioned already, for many years we've been praying for miracles, signs and wonders. For many years we desired to see people free because we begin to see even when people begin to get saved, shortly after we begin to see that there's certain characteristics that displayed, certain things that they were going through certain habits that they had certain addictions that they had and we tried to counsel them on the mental level but yet we could not we could not reach the root and eventually after six months eight months usually no longer than that people will slip back and walk away from the church and we knew that there was something greater something bigger that we had to offer to people and we, we, we followed the ministry, some ministries that offer deliverances and, and, and follow other ministries. And we kind of, we, we try to copy the techniques, forgetting or not knowing in a sense that it was not the technique that mattered. It was the fellowship relationship. It's the intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit that brought the results. Technique can vary from person to person. And we've seen people, for example, in the ministry of Prophet Yabi Joshua, we've seen people many times that try to imitate him, do all these different techniques, different things, wave their hand to, to try to set people free. And then they would, then the demons would attack them and inflict the pain on the people that try to exercise them because there is no closeness with the Holy Spirit. It's all just a technique. So I'm trying to, what I'm trying to bring to you is the importance and the reason why we need the Holy Spirit. Prophets Joel said and he prophesied in his scripture and he said that when the Holy Spirit will come everything will change as we know it now. It was the Holy Spirit that brings change. It is the Holy Spirit poured out on our life it's the fellowship with the Holy Spirit that changes us I was talking with this one person and um, 
he was start, he was sharing me some of his ideas some of the career choices that he wants to make or maybe business ideas that he wants to start and he said this it's like I have a friend that um that he's coming to do a business into tri-cities he's a multi-millionaire he's gonna start this multi-million dollar business and he wants me to partner up with him or there's a possibility to partner up with him and um you know and I can make money this way and I told him okay so what are you bringing to the table he said well you know I don't have much money I don't have but I'll bring my time and uh, you know I'll just I'll just manage and run the business and I, I told him the following I said look I I don't know how close you are with a friend but I know business a, a little bit and I know partnership in business and usually in business people bring equally to the table so for example if we are partners in a business you know I bring a hundred thousand you bring a hundred thousand we're equal partners or you bring something to the table that is equal to what's going to be happening you know to, uh, to run the business and I told them next thing I was like don't be fooled and don't be disappointed if that guy comes and says look you know I'm putting millions and what are you putting in this uh we're not equal partners I I really don't don't need you in this place now what am I going with this Holy Spirit is our partner Bible says we can partner up with the Holy Spirit and that partnership is not equal that partnership is sort of one-sided Holy Spirit he's God he has unlimited resources he has everything he supplies us with power all he said all you need to do is just say yes and partner up with me and so as a church we cannot afford not to know Holy Spirit as a church we cannot afford not to be with him and so those of us that some new and I know we have people that in our church that recently got saved and you know it's it's so it's so refreshing to see you know receive a text message and say hey what is the Holy Spirit or, you know who, who he is what are you guys talking about who is it so just for those of you that don't know who is the Holy Spirit and what it's all about let me just kind of quickly quickly break it down for you so Holy Spirit is God he's a third person of the of the uh, of the Trinity now it's important to understand and remember he is not third in rank he is equal God to God the Son and God the Father he is not as there is not like God the Father then second one uh, second in rank God the Son and then here's a Holy Spirit a little errand boy no that's not how it is if we want to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit number one thing we have to realize and understand that He is God all by Himself. Holy Spirit is God. He has His own feelings. He has, Bible says, He has His own thinking. He has His own emotions and if we going to start a relationship with the Holy Spirit we must realize that He is equally God to the God the Father and God the Son. Okay um holy spirit bible says he has he has his own thoughts and one and, and acts scripture says that it was good to us and the holy spirit so how holy spirit had his own thinking had his own plans he has his own independent from the father and the son yet they're in perfect unity so Holy Spirit another thing Holy Spirit is not a dove Holy Spirit is not a wind he's not a cloud he's not it Holy Spirit is the person and many times for us as Christians I know for me maybe because the theology that I was brought up in and raised uh, in that Holy Spirit was always kind of represented as a dove as some kind of wind fire and when I would think about the Holy Spirit that's the images that I would get and you know it's hard to connect with it or an object and that's why my relationship with the Holy Spirit was struggling and it wasn't going anywhere but when I begin to read books and when I begin to read uh, learn more about the Holy Spirit when I begin to realize when I receive the revelation the Holy Spirit is a person and I can talk to him he can talk back to me it made so much easier to spend time with him to talk to him to hear from him you have to realize the Holy Spirit is not an object he is a person and we must address him as a person if we are to have a relationship with him what helps me 
uh, is to realize that Holy Spirit is a per uh, sometimes we have this uh, we sometimes we have this idea Holy, we see God the Father it's uh, easy for us to imagine him he's like a father figure this big old dude sitting on the on the throne you know all dressed in white and he's this loving caring person he's the father and for us it's easy to address him easy to see imagine him and we pray about Jesus easy to kind of imagine him as well he's a Jewish man with beard and long rope and we kind of it's easy to impersonate Jesus and to talk to him and receive for him and sometimes when it comes to Holy Spirit we're like we get lost we get confused like okay how do I see him in my mind I mean what what do I see him and what helps me to think uh what helps me to see him as a person is that uh when I think of funeral when we when you see a body in a casket and I had a recently a friend that passed away and I went to, to his viewing and when he was laying there when his body was laying in a casket I knew that it wasn't him it was just his body he was gone he was no longer there and when you're gonna die when I'm gonna die our body will lay in a casket but in reality us me will not be there this is how Holy Spirit is he just doesn't have a body actually he does have a body it is yours and mine Bible says we are the temple of the Holy Spirit so if if you're having a hard time thinking the Holy Spirit as a person think of this the Holy Spirit is not a body he doesn't have a physical body yet he's still a person just like I'm not just a body this is just a cover but I am a spirit okay let's go into some very practical things how to start a relationship with the Holy Spirit we want to really equip you in this place you have to realize that's why I took some time to explain the importance of the Holy Spirit this vision does not work without the Holy Spirit salvation of souls miracles signs and wonders they do not work without the giver of these things that's why we need the Holy Spirit so right now I want to just share a couple things that I've discovered for myself and uh, things that we've been teaching in our church things that we've learned for other people that walk with the Holy Spirit that will help us to grow in relationship with the Holy Spirit first of all you have to ask the Father to give you a revelation of the Holy Spirit knowledge will not do knowledge will not sustain you knowledge will not, of, of the Holy Spirit will not will not last it will be just a quick thing oh I learned something at the conference for the next couple days you are excited about it and then you forget you have to ask the Father for a revelation not to give you the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit already lives inside of you but to give you a revelation the Holy Spirit as a person for example when we pray for healing we don't ask God to heal us because the healing has already been done we are healed we're asking for a revelation that we are healed and when you receive a revelation you receive your healing so when we ask we don't pray for God to give us the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is ready within us all we do is we ask God that God will open our mind and give us the revelation of the Holy Spirit this is the foundation for our this is the beginning for our relationship with the Holy Spirit now how do you come to the revelation of the Holy Spirit prophet David Joshua always says that meditation brings revelation write this down meditation brings revelation okay so a uh, pr couple practical things begin to read books on the Holy Spirit begin to listen to podcasts follow the people that have a genuine relationship with the Holy Spirit begin to uh, begin to read the Bible begin to seek out uh, seek out the verses on the Holy Spirit I know when when I begin to receive that when I begin uh, to seek the revelation of the Holy Spirit I started reading a New Testament from beginning and I just specifically began to read a New Testament just to underline everywhere with God where Bible was referring to the Holy Spirit and begin to begin to pick out those verses because I wanted to learn about the Holy Spirit begin to read books about the Holy Spirit you ask what book should I start with I'll give you a couple good morning Holy Spirit by Benny Hinn this is a wonderful book to give you fundamentals and to stir up your desire to know of the Holy Spirit another one of my other favorite books is in the honor of the Holy Spirit by Cash Luna in his journey begin to read books 
these books I don't just read it once I read it once and I'm like okay yeah I found out about the Holy Spirit they're just gonna give you a knowledge you have to take that book and read it at least once in two months take it chapter at a time digest it and read it as you read your Bible read it and let it sink in you will see six months seven months eight months down the road you begin to know the Holy Spirit in a much greater way Holy Spirit is going to begin to speak to you you're going to begin to realize that he is a person that he wants to work with you that he loves you that he has plans for you that he has emotions he has feelings he has his own thoughts that he wants to partner up with you to do his will you're going to begin to see how God will begin to align things in your life how God's going to begin to put people in your life how God's going to begin to lead to different messages and podcasts you supposedly random going to come up on but it will grow your relationship with the Holy Spirit in my personal life the book of Good Morning Holy Spirit and Cash uh, book of um, by Cash Luna in honor of the Holy Spirit this is the book that I read daily literally every single day I read my Bible and I read two three pages four pages of that book and this is the continuous that I read and I see how I'm able to maintain strong relationship with the Holy Spirit you have to feed what you want to grow if you want your relationship to with the Holy Spirit to grow you gotta feed it you gotta constantly feed it there's gonna be other things here the other revelations that you'll receive other things gonna God gonna work on you other things that God's gonna speak to you but you constantly have to have a flow feed to grow your relationship with the Holy Spirit there's podcasts and messages that are specifically set aside into the folder that I go back to and listen to it once a month or once in uh, once in a couple months to stir up my passion and desire of knowing the Holy Spirit are you receiving something this morning yes. connect yourself to the people and connect yourself to the ministry that constantly talk about him and people that walk with him the reason why you see the things that you see happening in our church of salvations the holy the revelation of the holy spirit the relation of deliverance uh, the, the healings that beginning to happen it's not just didn't come just randomly it's not that we just came up with this revelation on our own we connected ourselves to the ministry we begin to sow into this ministry we begin to go and sit at our feet and learn from them connect yourself pay the price pay any price if it has to do you have to take the day work and then travel somewhere far off if it's you have to pay for your own tickets you have to pay for accommodation you have to uh, pay to meet with them whatever it is you have to pay the price you have to sit at the feet and learn so that Holy Spirit can become more real to you I remember uh, I think it's A.W. Tozer said that Holy Spirit is everywhere his presence is everywhere his omnipresence he said but what makes a difference what brings in a manifestation of the Holy Spirit's presence in your life is your awareness of him that's why one person can come up on the stage and say Holy Spirit come and all of a sudden in a place demons begin to manifest healings begin to happen and an atmosphere just descends in you and and then uh you know great th things happen miracles begin to happen and then another person can come and he's he can just start yelling and and declaring and just it's just shadow boxing not just hitting the air nothing happens Holy Spirit is the same Holy Spirit is in the same place but it is the awareness of the person that brings the manifest presence in the midst number one make a decision to stay with the Holy Spirit forever I'm going to give you just five quick points how to advance and grow your relationship with the Holy Spirit make a decision to stay with the Holy Spirit forever because Holy Spirit made a decision to be with you forever God the Father gave us the Holy Spirit and he will not take it back from us so make a decision to stay with the Holy Spirit forever to me so make a decision make it consciously make it genuinely and take your notebook somewhere where you write stuff down or maybe in your Bible and write the date that you commit your life to stay with Holy Spirit forever so that you can always refer back to it I look at it as this way look at it as a marriage on my reign for example well I did it for a different reason so I don't forget but on my reign I, I put on engraved the date of my marriage it's 8 4 7 
okay just so that I don't mess up and forget and then I have to hear from my wife all right but relationship with the Holy Spirit is a union it's like marriage make a decision we are in union we're in partnership forever write that day down make it consciously be aware of it make ask Holy Spirit for that date that you that that the union for that revelation and write it down somewhere and anytime you go through struggles in your life anytime you feel discouraged and disappointment disappointed always refer back to the date I've made a decision I might not feel like it to pray today I might not feel like waking up this morning to uh, spend time with the Holy Spirit you know I kind of went out for a, for a couple of days or a couple of weeks and I just don't feel anything I'm just dry doesn't matter I made a decision it's forever okay this is not for a season this is not a new revelation you're on this is not a new thing that you discovered at the conference this is forever Bible says in John chapter 15 abide in me and I will abide in you union forever and then you will bear fruit so number two make time in your daily schedule for the Holy Spirit when you make somebody a priority you have to make time in your schedule for them for example when me and my wife got married and our lives are our lives are busy and we have always we're both of us in the ministry both of us have people we're discipling both of us have uh, jobs uh, businesses and we have many different things going on and one thing we've decided right from the beginning that we're going to take one day out of the week and that day we know that we don't schedule anything on that day for us it's Thursday we try to not meet with anybody we try to work around the day because this is the day that we go on a date we this is the day where we fellowship together where we partner together this is the day just between me and her after work we come and that's about us and no matter what's happening no matter how busy it is that Thursday we keep it for us we try to schedule everything else around it make a room in your schedule for the Holy Spirit so that you can spend time with him um, mornings are the best well, the reason why the mornings are the best is because when you wake up your mind is like a canvas it's clean present it to the Holy Spirit to write on it it will set your day up and it will make your day go by so much faster so, uh, so, so much better not faster you will accomplish things so much faster you'll go through the day much easier he'll help you to overcome things and he will help you to live live a victorious life Holy Spirit works through positive mind keep positive images images keep positivity in your mind get rid of every fear every doubt Holy Spirit can't work with people that have negative minds Holy Spirit can't flow through people work through people that have negativity positivity is simple means faith you trust in God he's with you and everything will be okay let me put it this way positive thinking is like a railroad tracks for the Holy Spirit as far as you build it that's as far as he can go in your life you build it only for 30 minutes a day that's as far as he's gonna go for you stay positive only for a couple hours a day that's as far as he's gonna work in you Holy Spirit Bible says you cannot please with God you cannot please God without faith faith is always positive faith is never negative faith always trusts faith never doubts faith always believes faith never is in fear so if you want to work with the Holy Spirit you have to live a positive life have positive mindset you have to keep positive images the language of the Holy Spirit is images when you pray I know with me sometimes sometimes you can start praying you pacing back and forth and your mouth is speaking you're praying for salvation of souls but your mind is doing business your mind is finishing homework your mind is doing other things you have to remember that it's not the words that we say that's why Jesus says don't be don't be in a haste to say many words when you pray it's the concentration of our images Holy Spirit he works with our images and our visions when you pray keep the images sharp in your mind when you pray for something be specific keep 
specific images in your mind don't be all over the place don't play in general when you pray keep the vision keep the images in your mind because the language of the Holy Spirit is images don't leave prayer without touching the Holy Spirit without him touching you and when you get to the place when he touches you sometimes I used to do that oh I got a breakthrough got a few minutes into it and I just okay I got refreshed I gotta leave no no wait this is the this is the moment that you actually this is what you are praying towards this is the moment that you're praying for to get into his presence because then Holy Spirit can take you and he actually can give you a, a intercessions he can give you the language he can give you the utterances to pray and that prayer is more powerful than anything else because there's a prayer we can pray out of flesh and there's a prayer when it's inspired by the Holy Spirit and the prayer accomplishes far more than we can accomplish on ourselves. Number three, come back when you make a mistake. One other thing I'm just going to mention on, on, on prayer that, that helps me. Sometimes, you know, uh, when you pray and you kind of hit the wall and you're just kind of trying to break through and a whole bunch of thoughts come into your head and you know you need to get into the presence of God but it's just, it's just a wall stopping you and um, and it's hard to, it's hard to get into the God's presence so I'm just going to give you a quick tip like that helps me and other people that I know it helps them hold you have to understand when the Holy Spirit he works through our thoughts okay so he works through our thoughts sometimes what happens is when you catch a thought that you feel a little drop hold on to the thought don't go on to anything else you might have a list to pray you might have you might have little things that you need to pray or you need to uh, do something else hold on to the thought because it's the thought that Holy Spirit wants you to pray at this moment when you find that when when you pray and you find a thought and you just got a little glimpse of God's glory a little glimpse of God's presence you feel just just a little drop hold on to the thought don't move on to anything else and keep praying keep cultivating the thought keep praying that thought over and over you're going to see how the presence of God will fill you and then he might give you a next thought to pray and then follow that pattern so don't just pray your goal is always to get into the presence of God and so sometimes Holy Spirit will start maybe with thanksgiving the other times he will start with with repenting but as soon as you get that little breakthrough in your spirit don't move on to anything else maybe Holy Spirit wants you to stay and really repent in the issue he really wants to work in that, in, that, in that area in your life or maybe Holy Spirit really wants you to spend some time in worship and praise and so or maybe he wants you to pray for somebody catch that thought that brings that 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 breakthrough in your life and hold on to it and cultivate it amen so number three come back when you make a mistake this is probably the one of the biggest things that that helped me to stay consistent in relationship with the Holy Spirit you have to understand that you will make mistakes you will fall into sin you will we don't want to but sometimes it happens sometimes we're gonna get angry and we will feel that Holy Spirit his presence is just a little bit far from us we will make mistakes you always have to remember that Holy Spirit knows that you will make mistakes he accounted for it and he still said I will be with you you have to quickly to be able to come to the cross apply the blood of Jesus confess with your mouth that you're righteous and stand on it and not allow any guilt or shame or any punishing yourself and you have to stay uh, you have to stand on your ground that I am forgiven the cross has done it all and that will help you always to jump right back into the relationship with the Holy Spirit um, verse 1 said that Jesus he was led to the wilderness to be tempted number four you have to obey the Holy Spirit the way the way you grow with the Holy Spirit is you have to obey him every time you hit a plateau in your relationship with the Holy Spirit that means somewhere along the line you plateaued in your obedience to the Holy Spirit if you feel like I've hit the wall somewhere look back and scan your life and see it was there a place somewhere where you disobeyed Holy Spirit 
I remember uh, one story from, from my life. Uh, it was actually not too long ago. And I just hit this, this, this level of, well, no. First it started, Holy Spirit just put this, this thought in my head to go apologize to somebody. I, I thought I never owned them apology. Actually, if I would tell you the story, you probably think those people owe me an apology. And, and so I didn't feel like I owed them anything. And so I kept wrestling the thought. I said, I made up, I, I made up a whole bunch of excuses why I don't have to go apologize to the person. I don't have to ask them for forgiveness. It has nothing to do with them. They actually should be the ones asking me for forgiveness. And I kept ignoring me and for, uh, ignoring. And for about three months, I literally wrestled with the thought. And it wasn't something big. It was just a still small voice I knew. And it wasn't going away that you need to go and apologize to the person. And I would try to pray. I would try to press in. And then, you know, their voice kind of started fading, fading away. And it faded away. And so for three months, I just get this, this dryness in my prayer. I can't pray. I can't get, I, I just can't move forward. And I, well, I mean, I just couldn't take it anymore. After about three months, I was like, Holy Spirit, I don't, I don't know. I need your touch. I need your feeling. I need to move forward. I can't be this way. I was like, I'll do, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. Just please, I beg you. I need your touch. I need, I need to feel you once again. And then that still small voice came back again. Go do that. And I was like, okay, okay. I, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do it this time. And so, I called, I, I emailed the person, I was like, hey, can we meet up? I want to talk. The person refused to meet up. And I was like, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, I did my part. So, Holy Spirit, I did my part. He's like, no, nope, go write an email. I'm like, but they don't want to meet with me. They don't want nothing to do with me. Plus, and I was like, okay, okay, all right. I'm going to go and do that. And I went and, um, I, but then I, I, I made a deal with God. I said, God, if I'm going to do this, I want you to touch me. I want you to grow in you. I, I said, I, I'm going to obey. I'm going to listen. This, it, it hurts. I, I don't think I owe them anything. But I'm going to do it. But please fill me with your spirit. As soon as I made that decision, Holy Spirit just came so strongly. Uh, I mean, my tears just start rolling down my face. I mean, this, this presence of God came into, uh, into my life. Uh, my life went to another level. And at the same time, I also made, I asked God for one thing. I said, God, I will do this. I'll humble myself. I will do what you want to do. My wife had for like two or three years, four years, every week she had like this, this at least two to three times a day, she had these nightmares and dreams that were tormenting. She would wake up in cold sweat, just scared. It would take a little, sometimes half an hour to kind of get over the whole feeling that that dream produced in her. And I said, God, I ask you for one more thing. Could you please remove that from her? I didn't tell my wife anything. It was just personal. It was right there. I was staying and kneeling. And I asked God, please, could you do that for me? And... Um, I did this I did this whole thing about a month and a half later I said uh I said hey babe do you do you still get I, I haven't heard you say anything do you still get those dreams she's like you know it's been fun it's been like a month and a half that I not once it came back to me wow. and now it's been now it's been a year and that dream never came back that torment and the night never came back and so when you obey the Holy Spirit then next Bible says in verse 14, you can walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. When you are, Holy Spirit will talk, before Holy Spirit will entrust us with this power, before Holy Spirit will begin to um, do things in our life, uh, healing the sick, saving people, He will begin to work with us. He will humble us. He will ask us to do things that will hurt sometimes. And if we choose to obey Him, if we choose to go further with Him, Holy Spirit will take us to the next level and to the next level. And then God's going to begin to use in a great and mighty way. Your home group is going to grow. Your church is going to grow. People will get saved in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And the last point is Jesus, make soul winning your highest priority. You have to understand the Holy Spirit wasn't sent to us to make us feel better. Holy Spirit was not sent to um, bless us and, and give us Mercedes and big houses even though He can do that. Holy Spirit was sent so that souls could be saved. Because, when, because uh, Jesus knew that without Holy Spirit our talk, our convincing is not enough to save a soul. It's the Holy Spirit that leads people to repentance. It's the Holy Spirit that brings conviction to the life of people. It's the Holy Spirit 
that breaks the bondages and yokes in Jesus name and so if we need to if we're gonna grow in a relationship with the Holy Spirit we need to make a commitment to win souls and make disciples we need to care for what he cares for we need to care what is on his heart we need to make his priority our priority two can't go together Bible says if they don't agree and Holy Spirit his vision is to save people is to heal people is to deliver people is to bring healing to people is to bring blessing to people is to break curses over people's lives and he needs a partner he needs somebody that will agree with him he needs somebody that say yes Lord I will do what you want me to do yes send me Holy Spirit is looking for people Bible says harvest is plentiful the problem is not that people are not ready to hear the gospel the problem is there's laborers lacking laborers staff shortage that's the problem there's no not enough people they can say Holy Spirit I will partner up with you I will agree to go together with you if you want to grow with the Holy Spirit if you want your life to take another level you have to make priority to win souls and make disciples whatever means it is whatever you can do and you will see that as you make God's priorities your priorities God will make your desires his priority I know we can bring up dozens of leaders in this stage and they can tell you one thing is that when they made a priority to go after God to make priority to win souls and make disciples even though in our life that some of them are still struggling we're struggling some of them were still needed deliverance in their life some of them were still in pain somebody some of them still were uh, you know had issues but they put away their issues and they said God I will take care of what's most important on your heart and God the interesting thing is that God began to arrange their life God began to bring money into them to their life God began to bring influence in their life God began to grow their influence God began to grow them in the character God began to take care of them God began to heal them God began to set them free but it all started with commitment to the cause and so today this morning I want you to make a commitment to grow with the Holy Spirit these five things is to make a decision to stay with Him forever make time in your daily schedule come back when you make a mistake obey him when he speaks sometimes it's just small promptings things that you can easily shy away and ignore but it's God that's speaking to you follow it you'll see God will prove himself faithful and number five make soul winning your highest priority God will always take care of you in Jesus mighty name Amen.